Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to round five of the Club 100 Sprint Championship in 2023, where we're at Clay Pigeon down in Dorset. We're going to get straight on with race number one, which is race number two on the day for the heavyweights, and we're starting in third behind Carl Walker, and we get ushered wide, a bit of loading going in turn one, which sees us drop down two positions for Carl's time. We try to get a little bit of a cut back going through the chicane, but there's nothing doing there as we settle into P4 and see if we can get those positions back as soon as possible because as you can see Kyle is already doing a, uh, a bit of a runaway job on us here so we get one of the positions back and uh, that puts us up into P3 and we're now behind uh, one of our other drivers that came through on turn one we're going to see if we can dispatch them as quickly as possible get a little bit of a better run coming through the last corner um, but not quite enough to get alongside it was a really windy day at uh, clay pigeon on the sunday probably not quite as windy actually as the saturday but still pretty windy so the toe was really powerful driver in front takes too much speed going into the first corner and that uh, we're able to keep that nice tight line going through turn one and two it means that we can get past them there now um, a few laps later about five minutes later in the race we've finally broken down that gap to car we have a look at keeping it tight through turn one and we're not quite alongside enough we uh, chanced it there to see if he would give us the space we put he, uh, we were probably in a, in a position there where he was absolutely right to not give us the space and it was a little bit optimistic on my part and uh, not pulling out quite early enough. We end up making some contact. I end up falling back from Kyle and that put me into the clutches of the driver that was in P3. So a bit silly there. Probably didn't have to go for the move at that point in time because we had the pace on Kyle having caught him up and uh, got a little bit too eager so we had to set off a P2 in race number one. Heat 2, we're behind Anwar Bowles-Smith, who's uh, come back from his hiatus and is in lightweights. And again, we're getting loaded going into turn 1. Uh, Anwar turns around and says, what on earth is going on, guys? And uh, I couldn't agree more. It's uh, a lot of loading at Clay Pitch, and the inside was a really advantageous place to be. Being on the even side of the grid, you end up losing out quite badly. Uh, but even so, it's no excuse to be putting yourself so hard into the rear bumpers of the cars in front. Uh, carts in front rather uh, also, uh, and while engages warp drive <laughs> getting down behind the steering wheel uh, as we go down the main straight into that headwind you can try and minimise that as much as possible then uh, you can pick up quite a bit of time but you end up going wide through turn one and as we can see that tighter line on the exit uh, you gain a lot of time doing that and we're able to get up the inside go behind uh, Mikey Nichols there trying to get his toe but uh, Anwar obviously got a pretty good launch coming out of the chicane and he's able to take that position back we give him the space and tuck him behind I mean as we know he's got the number one plate on that cart for a reason so we're not going to fight it too hard at this stage in the race and we're going to see if we can tuck him behind Anwar and uh, follow him along to try and get Mikey he looks behind gives a signal and warp drive is engaged again so we get behind him give him a bit of a push and see if that can help us catch up with Mikey a bit quicker uh, a few laps later, we're uh, following Anwar, but we make a mistake. We outbreak ourselves going into the hairpin, and that means that um, Alex Pritchard is able to sneak up the inside. We don't try and uh, cut back too hard, as again, it's still kind of early in the race, and we can we can recover from here if needs be. So we're going to stay behind Alex as he engages warp drive, getting down behind that steering wheel, trying to reduce the drag of that headwind hitting you. As you can see, Anwar this time makes that inside move stick on Mikey. Uh, just through that though we're able to catch up with the two of them and uh, we were a little train of four carts uh, about to be five because I think Kurt Holmes was catching up with us um, during this race as we were getting uh, nice and close to each other have a little think about going down the inside of Alex going into this double left but he uh, shows us the, uh, the rear of his cart and we think better of it and decide to tuck back in behind him as we come up towards the last corner. Last year, this corner was uh, really challenging for myself. I um, I was not getting it right. I think I probably got it white once the entire weekend, whereas this weekend, a half-hour test and uh, on the in the morning of this helped us get that right. And this time, we're definitely getting the first corner right. We've uh, picked up a few places uh, over the course of the weekend there just by keeping it tighter. So a mistake for me where Alec gets past and then a mistake from Alex where I'm able to get past on him and that puts us into P3. Now we're having to defend going through these corners because obviously we're very close to each other and we don't get the best run coming off this double left. And 
probably a bit absent-mindedly go to take the normal racing line going into this last corner and Kurt Holmes who's uh, got a much better launch apparently well obviously coming off that double left is able to carry more speed into the last corner we end up losing that third place and end up with fourth so uh, that takes us into P3 where we're having our back start uh, not P3 heat three rather where we're having our back start now 13th on the grid but luckily we've had all of our starts on the odd side of the grid we uh, get caught out a little bit by the driver in front braking maybe a little bit earlier than necessary and uh, after a little bit of a tap in the back we have to move to the left to try and avoid um, further contacts through the chicane it gets a bit clumsy with all the cuts around us we're able to cut underneath though and get one more place as we go towards the hairpin and uh, we're not quite able to carry that speed I was maybe a little bit optimistic trying to chance around there but we do um, secure one going into the first corner though runs wide I'm able to keep it a lot tighter and that's another position going into the chicane you can see there Adrian Ray getting caught out by a slow car in front we're going to stay towards the right hand side and we send it from uh, Christmas 2016 and luckily uh, Adrian spots us coming gives us the room and uh, that's another position off the start so a pretty a pretty good start from uh, from 13th on the grid we're working our way forwards tucked up behind the cart in front already as we go on towards the main straight and uh, I'm thinking here let's see if we can push him along if we've got the pace going into turn one uh, might have a move but otherwise catch up with that group in front who are still close together but again wide at the first corner tuck it back and this one just managed to squeeze it up as we go through the chicane it's a bit of a last move uh, last gas move going through the chicane there and uh, I don't carry the best line through it running a bit wide and losing momentum but I was able to secure the position off and we've caught up now with Andrew Wright who uh, I'm uh, Adam Wright sorry not Andrew Wright um, I don't think it's called the best car in this one he seems to be struggling a little bit and goes a bit deep on the exit um, as we go through the hairpin and we're able to cut underneath that'll be a, a move that we remember for later um, a good cutback move going through the hairpin and then um, Adam was still on the inside going through the double left but I was able to carry some good speed around the outside and that was another position gain so at the moment we can see the leader in front of us the uh, the carts in front are nice and close and here I tried it around the outside the driver kept really defensive going into that first one but no, nothing doing there definitely the inside line was better but goes for a move on the cart in front and gets it all wrong we can't quite slow the cart down enough and we tap into the back of them but in the in the mistake that was made by the cart in front they both end up really slow and uh, I end, end up able to cut underneath and so two positions gained in one corner thanks to the mistake from the driver in front now a few laps to go and again it's this first corner move keeping it tight really advantageous at this clay pigeon race circuit and that would put us up into fourth place we can see the leader just going through the hairpin there so having started 13th on the grid um, oh a bit of a mistake there actually going through uh, the hairpin i forgot about that the um yeah out broke myself going into that corner and that got a little bit nervy for a moment because there's no real need to push that hard going into the into the hairpin and uh, that opened myself up for risk but luckily we're able to uh, secure uh, fourth place in that race as we move on to the A final where we'd now be on the even side of the grid that dreaded uh, even side now the first start of this was false started lots of loading going into the first corner and I think rightly slow race control was absolutely like not a chance boys let's uh, let's try that again so this time going down towards turn one there's uh, a lot a lot better behaves from everybody we're stuck on the outside trying to get over towards the right but nothing doing We've got Miguel Hall inside of us we have to give him the space as we go through the chicane but it's uh, a much better start from the uh, heavyweight a final boys there and we're able to slot into ninth place i think i am at this point as miguel has a little think about trying to go around the outside of kurt there uh, nothing doing and he comes back across us to defend that position so at this point settling into uh, the start here trying to get a gauge of what could be happening in this race we've got uh, kyle walker who's uh, started on second had a really good set of heats, the car in C2, but um, not the best of starts as he's dropping down the pack, but we're caught out there by a yellow flag, meaning we can't follow Miguel as we go through that first turn, and uh, we're behind Carl for a few more corners. So as we come down towards the hairpin, seeing if we can make uh, or take advantage of 
Kyle not getting the best of starts and not having the best momentum and were able to cut underneath coming through the hairpin. Keep it a little bit tighter as we're about to go through the double left hander and that's another position gain. So we're in net um, class two position two at the moment uh, on the road, uh, I believe seventh or eighth overall. We have a little bit of a think on Miguel going uh, into towards the chicane but he keeps it just tight enough to get a, uh, a good exit and a good launch towards that left, uh, right left chicane as we come in towards the hairpin he's uh, doing a good job so far of keeping that car nice and wide making it difficult for us to try and get past because I, I felt like I had a decent amount of pace on Miguel but he's doing a really good job at this point of keeping the car in the way as we go through the chicane left right maybe catch a bit, more, a bit too much curb going through the left and uh, that sends him wide over a horrible sausage curb which really hurt your momentum we're able to go left and um, as we went towards the hairpin Miguel tucked in behind recognising that the, uh, the battle wasn't worth fighting at that point in time and uh, seeing what we could do together as we chased down after Alex Pritchard and uh, we are now up into the lead of C2 and 6th overall on the road with some quick boys in front that we're going to have to wait a very clean race which is not what's happening there a bit of a mistake going into turn one luckily able to get the cart slowed down enough to the point where I don't run out too wide and invite Miguel to have another go at us in a similar way to how I've been doing on uh, quite a few people up to this point jump forward a little bit we're uh, behind Alex now and at this point it's uh, trying to push him along, seeing if we can catch back up with uh, Adam and Kurt, who are in front. Anwar and Joe, at this point, have uh, kind of checked out, and Joe especially was absolutely lightning in this A final, um, as he would stomp off to a, uh, a rather convincing win. But we could still potentially get another place or two as uh, we get a little bit of a tap on the back of Alex. Nothing intentional there, just maybe got caught out a little bit by the entry speed I was carrying over Alex maybe just missed my uh, my turn in a breaking point a little bit there but uh, no harm no foul still in front and we're going to see if we can catch up on Adam now at this point I was kind of hoping that I could uh, catch Alex's eye who's turning around so I felt like I had the pace on him a little bit and uh, if we could have swapped positions here might have been able to catch up with Adam a little bit quicker and then if we hadn't done that, I'd have offered the place back to Alex uh, to um, see if he could pull us along there. But uh, at this point, wasn't able to do that, so we had to go around it the old-fashioned way and see if we could either push him along or make the move ourselves and then make our way towards the uh, fourth and fifth on the road. As we're towards the definitely the last leg of the race now, we're still on Alex's bumper, and we've been getting this last corner pretty good at this point. And again, as we come through the last corner, get a really good launch. I think now's the time to go. And Alex hasn't quite seen me. He uh, ends up putting me on the grass. Definitely not intentional there, but uh, we lose our momentum, and it was uh, a bit of a ride going up that grass. Got a bit of a kick and airborne for a moment. You don't really quite see it on the camera, but it was uh, a bit of a heart in mouth moment. But luckily, didn't lose too much time out of it and uh, Alex telling me to think there, look forward and we'll be doing exactly that, having a good think about maybe where I can get past him. Through the last corner on lap 15 out of 16, about to go on to the last lap of the race, Alex looking behind, trying to work out where we are. Definitely going to tuck him behind him because this is not the best place to overtake going into turn one. We want to try and do it going out of turn one, but Alex is wise to it, keeps it nice and tight. And as we go into the chicane, we're trying to think about getting the best exit that we can. Not good enough to be able to launch out the inside going into the hairpin but we think about maybe a good exit Alex gets it a bit wrong goes deep and I cut it underneath and can't quite squeeze it too far towards the left he's still got his nose in so we leave a little bit of space and this time having learned about what happened early with Kurt I'm going to keep it a little bit tighter as we go in towards the last corner turning in a little bit earlier to cut off that move from Alex and that would be fifth place on the road a C2 win as we can see Kurt having a little bit of a lock of the brakes, maybe felt like he could have done better in that race uh, to not let Alan, um, I'm so sorry Adam, I keep getting your name wrong in this video, uh, Adam Wright, maybe Kurt thought he could have uh, stayed in front of him, but there we go, C2 winner for uh, round five, I've written round four there, but everything's going wrong in this video, um, <laughs> round five of the sprint championship at Clay Pigeon, and 
we will move on to lid next time but until next time thank you very much for watching and as always have a good